can't remember to forget you. The one and only love of my life. As many of you may have heard, Nashville, Tennessee suffered serious flooding back the beginning of May of this year. Although this event didn't receive much news coverage, many people here are still struggling to put their lives back together. On that note, I'd like to introduce a friend that has experienced the flood firsthand and have her give some of her own personal insight on how this has affected her and how she has overcome so many of the obstacles that were put in her way to rebuild her life. Terry has had the courage to take on bankers, the city, and organizations that were here to help Nashville. She has rebuilt her home at her own expense with only the hope of reimbursement. Most importantly, she has found the strength to continue to move forward. Welcome to Terry Bruniger. Terry's also a singer-songwriter living here in Nashville. Hi, Terry. Hi, Deborah. I would like to thank you for coming here tonight and agreeing to share your story with everybody. Well, thank you for having me. Was your house the only one flooded right in your local area, or were there other houses that were also affected? Well, uh, East Nashville is where I live, and there were several houses in East Nashville. But the thing that was unique about my house, I was the only house on my block that was flooded, which was kind of a bummer, because uh, when I was driving home, there's a, a descent that goes down, and all the houses looked great, and then I got to the bottom of the hill, and all you could see was water everywhere, and there was my house like halfway underwater. The water came up to the window sills, the bottom of the window sills in the front, and uh, about six feet up in the back. So my house flooded. Hmm. Um, did you receive any assistance from the community or the city? I, I know that I kept seeing all these ads on TV, you know, to, to call these certain numbers for all the flood victims. Well, first what I did was I, um, I gathered up a bunch of friends and I'm like, let's all go over to my house and clean it up. And I got all these volunteers, which showed up immediately, which was great. It made me feel really loved and supported. And um, my first reaction was, uh, you know, the initial shock, of course, of seeing what flood water does to your home. I mean, it's gross. It's not clean water. That's the thing that people don't really understand. They think you just dry it out and it's back to normal, but it's not because flood water has contaminants in it. It has diesel fuel, it has sewage in it, it has mud and particles and all kinds of things. So when that water gets in the walls of your house, that's what ruins your house because you have to change out all of your electrical and all of these things, which I wasn't knowing that first day. So the first day I think, oh well we're gonna rip up the carpet and you know you'll have to cut the the drywall off and it'll be a piece of cake and so I thought it would be uh, a lot easier than it was so I, I was trying to stay positive the first day and I did see a lot of uh, telethons that started immediately Vince Gill gathered up a bunch of famous singer-songwriters and that was inspiring to see how the community of Nashville joined together and Hands on Nashville was a huge part of gathering volunteers. I even volunteered the day after we worked on my house to help some other people that I knew whose house was flooded way worse than mine. Their house is actually going to be demolished because it was so bad. And um, so you get a sense of hope at first. <laughs> and then reality kind of sets in. So about a week after that is when I started really seeing the extensiveness of the damage and how when the contractor came over and really started describing everything that was going to have to be replaced and it wasn't going to be a simple procedure. So um, back to your question, I did get assistance from FEMA. They were pretty prompt in dispersing uh, a little bit of funds to help me get started at least with rebuilding my house. Um, I'm still working on getting some other grant money. It's been a little bit frustrating, a lot of red tape, but I'm still attempting to get a little bit more funds because it's a pretty costly process. Now I know a lot of people were not even able to purchase flood insurance, so I assume that you didn't have flood insurance for your house. I did not have flood insurance. Uh, the way I understand it to work is 
you are either required to have flood insurance because you're in a floodplain or you are not allowed to have flood insurance. You can't even buy it if you want it. And I had asked to purchase it when I moved in the house because I'm at the bottom of a decline and I thought I might need it and they said that I wasn't eligible to, to purchase it. So I did not have flood insurance. And you found out then as you were going through all of this rebuilding and, and just kind of looking into everything that this house actually had been flooded in the past and you didn't know that when you bought it. It had been flooded back in the 70s and the city because of Ellington Parkway being built and it's it's a it's a little freeway that's kind of like on a big mound of dirt so to speak um, and all the water runs off the side and the city had come in and purchased all the homes around my house on both left and right and across the street. And I had always wondered why my house was just standing down there by itself. Mm -hmm. I was a little frustrated that the city hadn't informed me in some way, because I'm sure they knew it had flooded in the mm -hmm. past. I went downtown, talked to all these different departments and nobody could give me any information. Mm -hmm. So that was frustrating. So how has all of this affected you? long term it sounds like you you really have taken control you've taken on the bankers and different organizations in the city and you've actually rebuilt your house or you're in the process of of doing that well it's kind of turned me into a bulldog a little bit because i've just become very tenacious about not giving up we had the choice of rebuilding the house on our own uh, money that we borrowed or um, to foreclose on the house because it was impossible to, um, you know, pay a mortgage for a home that was not inhabitable. inhabitable. So, uh, which with much deliberation and tears and frustration, I finally decided that we had to go forward with it or lose it because, you know, I think a lot of people in the United States feel like a home is their primary investment. And for me, that was the only thing that I owned that was of substantial value of course sure. I didn't own it outright but you know you look at the long term of a house that it's going to be there for you when you retire or whatever mm -hmm. and just to let it go was painful enough to just it's like a child almost it's like um, you can't do that you know right. so uh, we decided we would do whatever it takes to rebuild it in closing, do you have any advice or anything else that you'd like to share with the people out there that may be struggling right now, whether it be financially, through other natural disasters, or even personally, that would help to give them the hope that you have now? Well, I would try to say look for the, uh, the pearl in the... Uh, in the... Oyster. Oyster. <laughs> I was going to say that crusty thing. <laughs> because... The, overall, it has changed me as a person. I would say I'm very much a stronger person now, and I also say that my level of acceptance has changed. And what I mean by that is I no longer accept um, down here. I only accept up here. And if it's not up here, then I just go the other way. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of been a big life shift for me. And I've also learned to not give up because the more tenacious and bulldog bulldog ish I've been I just keep saying I'm gonna work through this and I'm gonna get to the other end and boy determination I have done that and so I'm gonna start using that technique to other areas of my life I'm I, I've always kind of been that way though like I just can't give up mm -hmm. so that would be my biggest word of encouragement is don't give don't up, give up. Great. Well, thank you so very much for taking your time to, to come and, and share your experiences. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks. Thank you again for joining me on this two-part journey, showing not only the heartache and emotional and financial hardship, but the hope that comes only when people join together to help each other, no matter where they live in this world.
If what you've seen here has inspired you to want to learn more or contribute in any way, there are a number of worthy organizations that can still use your help. For more information, please visit my website, www.deborahlynn.com.